Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, we talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour right here. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, happy Fed Day, man. Yeah, happy Fed Day is right. And what a trading week it's been so far. Oof, I mean, how about 10% in the indices, Teddy, in, in the span of like less than a week? Just crazy volatility in those yields. We got the 10-year at 3.4% right now, I think, and that is uh, mm -hmm. off of the highs that we had uh, yesterday. Almost a little relief there, but 3.4%. Um, surprise ECB meeting going on today as if we didn't have enough on the plate. Uh, where do you want to start, man? We have some action in the yen. We got some action in the euro, the pound, uh, and crude holding up relatively well. Where do you want to kick things off? Okay, well, we had the obviously the dollar index broke out to the upside uh, two sessions ago and uh, followed through yesterday. I think what you're seeing today right now, though, is the beginning of a bounce. The one now, obviously, there's a Fed day and there's also this ECB thing. This could change a lot of things, but technically and fundamentally, from the way the market's been moving, I reversed yesterday. I actually, you know, I've been long the U.S. dollar, Swiss, and U.S. dollar yen for a while, especially uh, the, the Swiss also recently. I, I sold out of them yesterday after the markets closed, and I actually reversed. So, yes, Tommy, I am short the U.S. dollar yen right now. <laughs> nice. Things change. They, I mean, this, it's it's been some amazing moves, man. I have uh -huh. um, the U.S. dollar Swiss up here. Back to parity from 96 after being mm -hmm. at parity on, what, May 13th? Is that right? Just uh, right. that type of action. And, yeah, the yen. I was checking out the yen early in the program on one of the breaks, getting ready for you. Uh, that thing just continued, even after we mm -hmm. talked. A little bit of a, of a, not consolidation, but not quite the move it had had off of 127. But we hit a new high today, uh, just mm -hmm. above the high yesterday, 135.56. So you'd be looking for a pullback in that, in that number in the yen as well? Well, here's here's what I'm looking for, and we're going to have okay. a little divergence of the currencies right now. So not only did I get short those currencies, I got long the pound dollar, I got long the Aussie dollar, I got long the New Zealand dollar, I, and I also got long the uh, the Euro US dollar. So now the Euro, Euro US dollar and the Swiss uh, US dollar Swiss right now are not act, they're kind of quiet because of this ECB meeting, okay? That is definitely putting a lag on them. They caught a nice little bounce off the lows yesterday. Now, the interesting thing is you had, for instance, the Euro US dollar did not make a new weekly low, okay? Over the past couple sessions, the pound did, okay? So there's some, and that got a nice little bounce, okay? Australian dollar made a nice uh, new low, so did the uh, New Zealand dollar. They're bouncing, okay? So right now I'm looking for just a corrective bounce, meaning the dollar index has pierced new highs. I'm looking for a little pullback in the dollar, okay? So now this is without taking the Fed meeting or the ECB into play. So right now I think that that is on the, on the tra that's the trade that's going on right now technically, okay? Because the momentum is running out of gas right now, short term, okay? Now what Chairman Powell does today or not, I can't, t I don't have a crystal ball on that one. I would hope that all this talking head nonsense is, you know, who was saying already a long time ago the Fed should do a three quarter point or a full point? I've been saying that over a year ago that they needed to do that. Now is not the time to start getting that aggressive because you have a, you have a treasury secretary that just finally admitted that, oh, they got it wrong. Inflation really is here and it probably isn't going away anytime soon. So what is, how is the Fed going to react to that one, you know? So, and I think if they really juice the interest rates, I mean, what are they trying to break the system? You know, I mean, we already know that with the economic numbers that are coming out, that you certainly get these lags, especially in sales. And if this hits like the car markets too, like if you raise the interest rates three quarters of a point, I mean, mortgage are, mortgages are slowing down, refinances are slowing down, car buying, even electric car buying is going to get, you know, it's going to have a noose around its neck, sure. you know. So, and I think that these are things that the Fed, if if the chairman, if he's not paying attention to this and doesn't address this today, and actually follows the talking head speak, I mean, we're going to have some really volatile swings. Not to mention, you know what? It's going to be really hard on the stock market. You know, I mean, it's attack on the oil industry. Also, if they impose this this nonsense about if they have more than ten percent profits on the year, I mean, you're looking at an industry that struggled for a couple of years. Over the last year and a half, because of presidential mandate, they're making money. You, you can't put a noose around their neck because that means any business at any time, they can come in and say, by the way, TFNN, you can only make 10% more than you did last year. The rest goes to us. Yeah, that, it's a that, tough that, one, that's, man. That's not that's a, that's not a good thing for the market. No, but no, anyhow, back to the uh, the Fed I thing. I, I think the dollar is going to turn on this uh, on this number today. 
Yeah, I mean, I saw something. I think the 30-year mortgage is up to like 6.28%, and I'm mm-hmm. ballparking numbers, folks, but I saw something like, you know, a $450,000 house last year at 3% is basically akin to like a $320,000 house this year at 6% for the payment. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, that $450,000 house last year is probably five fifty dollars or six hundred dollars or something bonkers if, if it's in Florida, it is, right. man, with the real estate prices sure. they're at. So all of them combined, it's pretty wild. Uh, and we have a 10-year yield. That's at 3.4%. Mm-hmm. We're almost up two full percentage points from where we began the year. Um, and maybe this is where, you know, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I just mammoth moves. I know. I mean, do you remember the conversation, mm-hmm. Teddy? And it's it was it was a decent conversation as in people weren't crazy saying maybe we stop at 2.5 for a little while. Right. Maybe mm-hmm. we stop at three percent and the market just kind of digests this number and then the market becomes OK with three percent as we get three or six. I mean, it just doesn't stop right, right. now. Um, no. So eventually it will stop, though. And maybe we've kind of sure. maybe we're inching closer to that point. Uh, sure. Crude. What's your take on crude? We had a little bit of negative action yesterday, but we've talked about mm-hmm. it before, man. In context of where this market's been, five and six dollar swings are almost the expected norm at this point. One eighteen fourteen I have right now for the price of a barrel of sweet mm-hmm. crude. What's your action in? the crude market just a little pullback you know i think yeah. it's just literally just a little pullback that's it you know we keep on making higher move highs and higher move lows so i think that no matter what it's an edgy trade oil is not just shooting up to 150 overnight you know i mean sure. there's nothing nothing like that's going but the trend is still edging higher and especially as interest rates you know i think that one of the things is, is interest rates if they get a bounce here in the short term i think that you can see oil probably stabilize for a little bit and maybe play with support, but I don't see it really breaking. And I think that once interest rates start to pound the lows again, oil is going to start to pound the highs again as well. Got to love it, man. Um, now, you've talked about it before, Teddy, with saying, you know, people who are seeing those crude numbers, they see the volatility. Mm-hmm. If they're thinking about trading crude, um, currency wise, how, how do you look at that market if you're thinking of trading crude, maybe in trading currencies? I know you talk about even maybe options in that market. Mm-hmm. Um, for those that didn't catch that conversation the first time we had it, it, it what do you what do you look at when you when you kind of explain that previously, how you trade a market so volatile? Uh, I think that the U.S. dollar yen, uh, the pound dollar are two of the really best ones to use when it comes to trading the oil uh, trade without using the oil futures. Uh, you can also use the euro as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I think that the pound and the and the yen are basically the best crosses when you want it. And also the Canadian dollar can be, but right now it's not. It's just because the Canadian dollar is just one big sloppy range trade. You know, and you've talked so, about because and just. To, to bring it in full fruition, like the the dollar yen, right? As the U.S. being mm-hmm. a producer and the Japanese being consumers, that's where they really get hit there as that market right. explodes. Right. It's a great right. it's a great conversation, man. As you and they're a big manufacturer that. too, so that's a huge thing okay. too. Nice. Well, Teddy, yeah. man, we appreciate you taking the time as always. Uh, it should be a wild day. I don't know where we're going to be a week from now when we talk to you, man. But we yeah, appreciate the education. It's been very interesting today. So as always, man. Up, thanks for taking the time. Not already in. <laughs> right? Seriously. Well, Teddy, yeah. have a great one, man. Have a great week. And we'll talk to you next Wednesday. Absolutely. See you next week, Tom.